Good afternoon, uh, all of you. Um, so I'm uh, Jan Wolf. I'm working with the IFC and I'm in the infrastructure department, and I'm based in Senegal in Dakar. Uh, Adrian, thanks a lot for having us here, and it's it's really great to um, to see the evolution in, in in all the presentations and also in the conferences. And the first ones I attended was really should we do this, and then it was like how can we do this. Today we really, you know, we see that quite a lot of opportunities are, are starting to be quite concrete, and you know they're starting enough to to be realized. Uh, and I really hope that next conference we can talk how did we do this. So in order to to answer that last question, uh, as as Adrian mentioned, uh, finan financing is going to be part of uh, of that solution. Uh, and I'll, I'll try to give you a little bit of a of background of uh, what we can do in that space, what we see as uh, as trends and and. Uh, and 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 what we can do as as uh, as uh, uh, potential proposals to help you, and uh, give you a bit of hints and tips of what we see as essential in doing uh, project financing. So first of all, um, very short IFC. Uh, IFC. I hope I don't have to explain you who we are. We are part of the World Bank Group, um, the, the the largest. Uh, uh, development bank, uh, global spread. Um, IFC is covering the private sector, uh, active in all emerging markets. Um, we have quite a big presence um, in the infrastructure sector. Um, uh, renewables is, is really, uh, when we talk about infrastructure, it's 90% energy, and in the energy sp uh, um, sector, uh, clean energy and especially renewables uh, roughly cover two thirds of our activities. So, um, giving our let's say uh, let's say the nature of our business is working in emerging markets. So uh, we're quite comfortable in entering new markets, new countries, uh, dealing with new regulatory frameworks. Uh, that's let's say the, uh, our daily business. And the same is valid also for mining and our infrastructure department. Mining is a, a big chunk. Uh, we we are active already since '56 in the mining industry, uh, taking both equity as debt positions, uh, engaging in early development from pre-feasibility. Um, uh, we have done uh, deals in 25 countries. So we, uh, even though we are financial institution, I think we we, d we can say that we also are quite familiar with what is happening in the mining industry. Um, to demonstrate that even more, um, I'm just going to highlight one project we have financed already two years ago, um, where we already uh, uh, financed uh, a 100 megawatt project from San Edison in Chile, a solar PV project. Uh, at the time, it's it was really quite innovative when nobody was actually talking about uh, mining and renewables. We already did it. Um, so at the time, uh, it was a project of roughly $270 million. Um, we structured the whole deal. Uh, we um, ensured that there was an, uh, a, a PPA, so an offtake agreement with the mine to ensure that they could hedge on a long-term basis their costs and we actually could give them power, uh, meeting 15% of their power demand. The reason we were able to do that beca was because of our extensive experience in the uh, solar PV industry, because of our extensive uh, um, experience in structuring uh, this kind of uh, offtake agreements and because of course our in-depth knowledge of the energy sector in Chile. So we were able to provide quite uh, significant advantages to our client. Oops. So when we did that we really saw you know this is a great opportunity, great market and the uh, fact that we have all these conferences is that we were not the only ones. But as, as IFC, we talked quite a bit with a lot of our clients and what we, we got as a feedback was that a lot of the clients that were looking at opportunities to be able to reduce, reduce this, their cost. But on the other hand, they were really, you know, every time we were talking about potential solutions of financing whatever project they had, were facing the issue of long-term off-day contracts to actually match the long tenors to be able to have a, a, a reduced power cost. On the other hand, also mining companies more and more, uh, they were confronted with a situation that, you know, a lot of developers come to see them, a lot of people with a lot of know-how, but for mining companies, it's not always too easy to choose, you know, with whom to deal with. And uh, the technology is also evolving. Uh, initially, it was just fixed tilt, so models, that was it. Then, you know, we had trackers, you know, is that reliable? And nowadays, we're talking about batteries, which is even more complex. And 
it is not easy to, to choose your technology, especially not if you're going to co commit yourself to 10, f maybe 15, 20 years. So you, you want to, to, have to choose right. And as a mining company, that's not your core business. And on the other hand, we as IFC and the World Bank Group, we really see the mining industry as a, a key core investor in the uh, sustainable development of, uh, of the infrastructure in Sub-Saharan Africa and uh, emerging markets in general. Um, they're really they're the key drivers of this economy. And, and if mining companies are not able to, in a certain way, to integrate and enforce the overall grids in, uh, in, in the region, it will be very difficult to, to, to see that sector uh, significantly evolving. So therefore, we, we really see ourselves as a kind of, you know, an intermediary, a guide, uh, to help to structure deals for uh, mining clients and to, to make sure that the deals are actually reflect the, reali the daily reality of mining companies. And, you know, as, as we are all here already for a couple of times in, at this conference, I think it's really time to just do it. Having said that, and before to jump into some, some possible proposals and, and, and solutions, just some, some takeaways uh, from trends and evolutions we have seen over the past couple of years. Initially, when we looked at, at the industry of, of renewables and mines, we were really looking at uh, off-grid mines. Uh, off-grid mines was like a no-brainer, you know, uh, $30, $40 cents of, of uh, electricity costs. Um, you know, you didn't have to make any business model to, to make it work. Uh, recently, you know, we had, uh, not really recently, but over the last couple of months, we see a quite uh, big increase of the volatility of the commodity prices, which is a, a nice synonym of uh, a huge crash of prices, which actually makes uh, the, the, the balance sheets of, of, of these mine companies to be quite stressed uh, nowadays, which means that there's even more than before a focus on cost reduction. There's even more a focus, unfortunately, on uh, uh, holding up new investments. Shareholders do not like to invest if they don't know whether or not they can uh, um, get their return back. And, you know, if you don't know what your price is going to be on the long term, it's very difficult to make any long-term commitments. So it's a kind of a paradox that the, the typical mining companies we thought we could envisage as the clients for this kind of renewable to mines uh, solution are nowadays you know, the first ones that um, on, on board meetings are the first plans that are actually are, 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 are being discussed to close because they are the most expensive ones. And because of the uh, uh, drop in fuel prices, they also the, 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 the whole business case is suddenly coming a less, less more compelling than it was before. Then we saw a second trend, and I think yesterday and also today, <coughs> we saw a lot about South Africa, about Ghana. Um, Mining companies that were always been uh, used to be connected to the grid suddenly lost a bit um, their, their comfort. And they, they, they have to look to different solutions. They have load sheddings, grid is just not reliable anymore, and increased steep price increases. So they have no idea where in the next couple of years they're going to be from a cost point of view. And so you see indeed that here in South Africa, a lot of mining companies are really thinking of being independent of ESCOM. In Ghana and Tanzania, people are, you know, either they, they have to stop to expand, either they have to shut down, or they have to invest in their own production units. So, you see, the market is on one hand side, is getting more challenging. Mines have more difficulties in, in, in bringing up the cash to do the additional investments. But on the other hand, business is also, in, uh, model is, is increasing. But, unfortunately, if you go to, you know, look to, to other ways of financing this project than the traditional uh, on-balance sheet financing, which mines have typically been doing, you look to project financing, and also there you have your constraints. And there, unfortunately, size really matters. Um, uh, if, you, if you have to do an, 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 a finance, a non-recourse project financing of, let's say, $10 million, you're just not going to make it. The, the, the transaction cost of, of, of non of non-recourse project financing require a certain scale because it's quite time and resource intensive. So typically we look at, at you know, uh, projects of at least 40 to 50 million dollars. So it's quite sizable. And there's another element why size really matters, especially if we look at the off-grid mining solutions. More and more, 
when we discuss with mining clients and we try to find solutions on how can we get beyond the issue of the reserve life and the limited reserve life, you know, everybody is coming, yeah, but can't we connect to the grid? And yes, of course, we, we should actually connect to the grid because when the, life li the reserve life of the, man, of the, uh, of the mine uh, stops, you know, what are we going to do? Are we going to leave there 10, 20 megawatts in the middle of the desert doing nothing? For sure not, that's stupid. And then we say, okay, but there's a local community. Okay, it's great to have a local community of 2,000, 3,000 people, but you know, 10, 20 megawatts, it's quite a bit of uh, electricity. So yes, we should actually think about connecting to the grid. But again, size matters. If you have a 10, 20 megawatt mine and you have to connect 100K to, 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 to be able to, to, to get to the public grid, you can't absorb it, so you have to have a sizable size to get to, to have an affordable grid connection. And either your, your mine or your, your renewable or your energy plant is big enough to absorb this cost, or either we should think about clustering. And I don't really know a lot of mines who are really isolated in the middle of nowhere where there is no other mine. There are quite a bit of you know, countries, regions where uh, mines are clustered in certain zones where with a bit of, uh, you know, smart thinking and engineering, one could think about an, uh, of, of uh, renewable or whatever conventional energy production that on the long term, they could be connected to the grid. And in discussions with, with other multilaterals like the World Bank Group, with the African Development Bank, there's quite a bit of interest to try to see to what extent they actually can connect these clusters to the national grids on the long term, to on the one hand side, to make sure that we can extend the tenors of the individual off-grid mines beyond the, li the expected reserve life. And on the other hand, actually making sure that the energy that is going to be pre produced beyond the reserve life is actually benefiting uh, to the local, um, uh, local grids and, and, and actually adding a extra capacity to these grids. So that's all great to see and, 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 and look at, um, but in the end, what is going to happen? So, we, as I see, we, 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 uh, as we thought, there is need to, 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 to do some guidance. We created a kind of an, uh, an integrated solution proposal where we, as a, where we try to combine all our experience, all our relations with both suppliers, technology, developers, uh, mining companies, to try to, to, to help you to step in, to, to together look for a solution that actually works for you the best. So what were you trying to do? is do a kind of a pre-feasibility and to the, together determine what could be the, uh, the best cost for you uh, from an uh, electricity point of view. Uh, initially we thought about, let's say, 15 to 20 cents, but with the recent uh, drop in prices, you know, uh, and, and with certain plants and under certain conditions and with, with the right tenor, you can even get at 10 cents and even below. And we pre-agree on that one. Once we have done that, we will, together with you, we'll select the proper developer or supplier and we will do together with that supplier, we'll do all the pre-feasibility work. We will structure all the project agreements and we'll, end, of course, we'll ensure that the financing is there. And if the model works and we actually, we come to the conclusion that, you know, the initial price we, we pre-agreed, we, we meet. At that time, we actually say, okay, let's go on. And if we don't, fine, no problem. The mine, they, doesn't, they, they do not lose anything because they don't have spent any cent. And we, as such, we give all the uh, feasibility studies, so as, uh, if the mine wants, they can continue to look for alternatives that m better suit their uh, uh, needs. So uh, basically what we try to do is, IFC is putting developed money, money at the table. We will structure the whole deal, we will engage with the developers, and we will uh, provide most of the financing. How would such a structure then actually look like? Because, you know, that's, that's also one of the questions, like if you do non-recross project financing, what does this actually look like? So basically, we're gonna create a, a special pr project uh, vehicle, an SPV, which, are go which is going to be the owner of the energy producing assets. The SPV will sign an offtake agreement with the mine, and will sign an EPC contract and an o a long-term operation and maintenance contract with an, <coughs> with an EPC contractor. And IFC, together with other lenders, will provide uh, the, the financing. So as such, the big benefits for mining companies is that if they don't want to, they don't have to put any money into the deal. They know beforehand, before stepping into the whole development cycle, they have a view what is the expe expected cost gonna be. And most importantly, 
before engaging with anybody, they're pretty sure that the finance is, financing is going to be in place. And that's quite a big and an important argument because you don't want to spend a lot of time and money and in the end ending up with a project that, in the, that is just not bankable. And that's actually what we want to avoid. We, we want to be there with you. We want to make sure that you, 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 you choose the best solution, the best developers, the best structure, and make sure that in the end the project gets realized. We understand, of course, you're not obliged to go in, into that way. And no problem at all if, you, if you're willing to develop your project on your own. And, and even then, we're happy f uh, to support you in any way, whether it's on debt, whether it's on equity. And if you do so, we just want to give you some key takeaways based on the experience we have no, uh, since we engage with, with clients in this sector. I think a key one, a first, is to make sure that you have a committed and experienced sponsor. Why do we say so? Is because uh, sometimes we, s we, we see, like, for mines, uh, especially on Solar Pre-V, they see Solar Pre-V, it's, it's plug and play, it's easy. You know, it's, if you look at the technology, it's simple, so why can't we do this all by our own? That's true, but, you know, the whole structure in the contractual framework and so on, and all the commitments, it's, it's, it really it requires a bit of experience. And also, we really want to see that in all the technology choices uh, one makes, there's really the long-term commitment and assurance that the performances and the availability is guaranteed. So therefore, we really, uh, when you do a first project, make sure you have an experienced developer or sponsor on board. Second one is have a clear and transparent structure. It, in essence, it, it's very simple. It starts with a clear pay, a take or pay contract, which actually means so every kilowatt hour which has been produced, you're actually going to pay for it, whether or not you're going to take it. And as a mine, if you don't feel comfortable with it, then either reduce the size of the uh, installation or either do just don't do it. Because really, if, you don't, if you're not willing to go into that route, it's never going to happen. Uh, it, it's as simple as that. And secondly, also contractually, it is really crucial that you make sure that you have um, the, the, a long-term PPA offtake agreement and make sure you have an accredited worthy offtaker. So don't try to put up an SPV that is going to be the offtaker to protect the potential liabilities of your mining company. It's just not going to work. Thirdly, make sure it's competitive on the long term, especially for on-grid mines. So here in South Africa, a lot of people are thinking, you know, what can we do? What should we do? Um, it's important that you look at alternative uh, uh, sources of power. And don't just look at the price of ESCOM of today or tomorrow. Look at the price of ESCOM you, you can anticipate in the next 20 years. So really, you know, if you're in a country and gas is available, you might be w need to compete with gas because otherwise, you know, if you have an, a PPA which is, for example, at 12 cents and gas is coming in at 8, eight cents, you know, it's going to be tough to, to, to respect your obligations. So considerations to think. And then last but not least, um, make sure that if you want to s reduce your costs of power, don't be cheap in the development. Make sure that you do your risk analysis properly. Make sure that everything is in place and really make sure that, um, you know, all the risk assessment is done in a proper way. I see Adrian is approaching, so I think I have to close. <laughs> I gonna, uh, if you, uh, I'm not going to go into details on the, on the indicative terms. Uh, I presume they're going to be available. Yeah. So uh, happy to, to uh, have afterwards a discussion with you if you want to have a bit of more details on what we expect to see from you if you're going to structure a deal. And uh, you have my contact details here and I'll be around uh, for the rest of the day. Thanks so much.